So Michael Meyerhoff is a German composer based in Hamburg. He studied mathematics and music in Kassel and art history and philosophy in Hamburg. Meyerhoff writes non-pitch writes non organized music since the early 90s with he presents at performances all over the world. He primarily works with instruments, objects, preparations, applications, oscillating systems and motors with a particular focus on extended techniques and the exploration of unusual sound generation. The term musique concrète instrumentale could be applies perfectly to his uh, approach of music. This term was coined in the connect connection with, uh, with uh, Lachenmann, but I think it also really kind of uh, captures the, the essence of Michel's Meyerhoff's music. He was an invited lecturer at Trinity College in Dublin at the Stuttgart Musikhochschule, California Institutes of the Arts, Los Angeles, Mozarteum Salzburg, and the Central Conservatory of Music in Beijing, among many other places. Um, he works extensively with graphical scores, which he uh, prepares in um, Illustrator, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm welcoming um, Michel Mayov, who will tell us more about multimedia scores. Thank you very much. And it's all yours, Michel. Okay, thank you, Georg, for your introduction. Um, I'm very honored to, to uh, have given some time for, for a presentation of my working processes, my music. Um, I called the lecture multimedia scores more in the sense that how I use or how I was forced to use multimedia in my uh, notational systems. Um, as you at the beginning as I said, I'm writing non-pitch organized music. Uh, I was really uh, looking for systems to write, to, to notate that these kind of music write quite uh, precisely. Um, and of course the pipelines, uh, which is uh, which was developed for, for the pitch music, which is perfectly for the pitch uh, notation, is doesn't work anymore for uh, non-pitch organized music. Uh, so I really had to uh, use other graphic uh, um, means. And it's not Illustrator, Georg, it's uh, Quark Express. You know, I started in the 90s where I think Illustrator, I'm not sure when it was invented. Nowadays, everybody uses InDesign, but at that time, the, the, the most uh, common uh, design uh, 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 software always used also in the, in, the, in the media world in Hamburg was Quark Express. So was, that was the reason I got it from friends. They were at the Spiegel. Um, and so I, 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 I used that from that time. Also uh, InDesign is um, also a very good program, but I had all my libraries in Quark. So I sticked to Quark and now they are quite good in updating things. Um, so I start with the uh, guitar piece. Uh, I will play some music uh, only like two or three minutes uh, just to, to demonstrate um, how I'm musically working. So I start with that piece. Two acoustic guitars, you know, after they played Lachemann's uh, the guitar uh, duo, they asked me to write another duo for two acoustic guitars and uh, that's how I came to it. <laughs> Thank you. 
the setup is for the guitars is uh, is maybe it's all two kind of motors, like sonic motors and the normal oral bay uh, mechanical motor and um, two amp sticks. That's all, and I can turn the like the, one of the pitch instruments um, into a, really a noise instrument, but. Uh, for just for the concept uh, of noise, I I don't use this word anymore. I, for me, it's more uh, the, the counter concept to pitch is more sound complex. Um, to be very precise about that, uh, complex musical ideas can be formulated also with in this world of non-pitch materials. So the scores, of course, they have to look different. So. Um, uh, you know, five lines only for the string, uh, string uh, identification, you know, that they are used to the E string, then I, of course, I write an E. Um, and what I did is also uh, make video scores for them. That means you have a time-based score. And this is the, the first very big difference to normal scores, which are temp uh, which are spatialized uh, uh, 2D representations of the music. And if you, if you go into the, the space, um, uh, in, in, the, in the temporal world scores, then as you see, the cursor follows the place where you are. So it's, it's a combination between the, uh, uh, between the, the paper 2D, fixed space of the score and the temporal quality. And that has some consequences. For example, the bar lines, the bar lines make no sense anymore in a, in a, in a, in a temporal way, because when, this, uh, when, when, when the cursor hits the one, in, temp, in normal notation, you know, the note comes a little bit after the one. one. So I make this gray fields, um, it's very easy to lay out, and then I have the squared heads of the notes, which means you know if the cursor hits the, the line in front, then it's time to play. And when the pause is starting, then it's pause, so you can perfectly uh, also uh, see the timing by, by the cursor. Um, so every you know you have systems, you have uh, symbols. Uh, layouts of graphical uh, situations which are suggestive for the musician to what 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 he has to do um now i, I don't see my full screen anymore but um yeah when when, when i would say in in general that uh, composing is not only uh structuring sound processes but for the structuring the sound process for for the for creating musical ideas, then of course, uh, in non-pitch organized music, first of all, we have different musical ideas. Uh, and the pitch is only one maybe aspect of much more important uh, parameters which, uh, which form this, this uh, musical ideas. And for me also, because I always also work with video and movies and, 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 and um, and not animations, but uh, in a way computer generated. So I can also transfer these musical ideas to images and performances and movies and everything else. So it must not even have a sound aspect, musical ideas, because I'm working a lot also with silence and silence is for me a, um, a big uh, work of uh, uh, a big field of work. Um, that's what I already said. That with this notation of the of the sound complex, we need new graphical ideas. And if you want to have a complex musical idea, I think the uh, the, the approach of the graphical and the media media representation has to be quite complex too. So. Um, when in general I wrote the function of musical notation is to project the quality of the sound process, which are temporal into the visual field so that we can refer to, uh, people can interpret it, we can discuss, we can analyze 
it very easily in, on, in this visual field. Um, the video scores, uh, as, uh, as you saw, I, I will show more, more, more uh, examples. They have this combination of the temporal and spatial qualities of the score. I skip this. For example, um, what I also like with uh, graphics, and for me, graphic, you know, in, for the composers, graphic notation has sometimes like a little bit uh, like, you know, not, not so seriously taken uh, kind of notation. But for me, it's very, very uh, helpful and serious uh, um, and precise instrument to, to formulate musical ideas. For example, here is a, is a, it's an example. The guitar has to play in the left hand, you know, this 16th tremolo with a motor on the bridge, right and left. And now with the right hand, he has to make these attacks in a very complicated rhythm. And as you, you can see, so you can make very easily this complex rhythm and uh, go back. And if I would, you know, really fully notate the complexity of this rhythm, it uh, would would really look like funny how it. I am not sure if it would be precise. So, uh, spatial notation in a certain way can be very, very, very precise. Um, and you know, with with the idea of spatialization, uh, if you come to rhythm. In general, it's it's a very easy mean to produce complexity with uh, with uh, visual or uh, graphic graphic uh, means. For example, uh, I wrote um, like 15 years ago a percussion piece with uh, with different uh, metal gratings, different structures. Uh, I taped like kind of uh, pattern over it, and now the percussion player plays circles with. Um, with the marbles, glass marbles with different sizes. So, um, let me show you. Give a little bit of the score. Um, so the, the graphical, this is the graphical representation of the surface with the with the patterns. So I can I can draw in these patterns like the the figures of the, the percussion player has to to uh, execute. And mostly it's circles because I think with a circle it's uh, anyway it's you can have so many complex rhythms, but there's also like eight notes and uh, uh, eight eights, not eight notes. And what I found is that um, it just just uh, defined the normal, like the quarter note in, in, in the classical time notation in our uh, music uh, as one circle. And every circle has an anchor point. And if you reach this anchor point, uh, then you how you that's how you count uh, the circle. So if you have an uh, eight notes, so you make two circles in that time. So it's very precisely uh, like timed the, the movement because it circles uh, and uh, the like where it is, like the rhythms which are produced by the negative 
tapes, as to say, um, it's very, you know, can be very easily written. And I, as a composer, I just have to, which I think it's, for me, nice to have just the, the, the drawing a circle and produce really complex uh, rhythmical structures. Um, so you do, you can do that for the both hand. So finally, the score looks very simple. You have triplets, you have uh, eight notes, you have uh, quarter notes, that's it. But then if you see where, where the circles are, are placed and you can imagine how, you know, how complex the rhythms uh, are. But the notation is very simple uh, and the result is quite a complex rhythmical structure, which I always really interested in to find easy solutions uh, for notation, but also um, to find easy means to, to uh, produce complexity. So uh, for, for the percussion player, it's, uh, it's very easy, for example, to make within one movement of a circle, you make six or seven different, for example, if you go to bar six on the five, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, six different uh, events, acoustical events in one beat, because he has to make the circle in one beat. And when it's black, he has to touch the, 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 the surface. So it'll make sound. So this is quite, you can see the first is uh, shorter, the second is longer, then you have two shorter ones. And there, the, the spacing between these impulses is also different. Also, would, if you would really notate it fully, you go into a world which needs a, a whole row just to notate this uh, uh, this uh, rhythm in on the five in the bar in bar six um, so just with graphical means uh, very easy put uh, produced a rhythm so for example and then of course you you if you have this graphical visual display on on your desktop so then you can play around for example what would it mean if I would uh, uh, would 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 um, how do you say uh, one circle to move one circle from the one end just to the other end, and that that's the musical idea of the whole the end of the of the piece. So it starts here, as you see in 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 bar one hundred eighty, um, just on the left, and then as it moves forwards at the end, uh, the circle just moves like graphically uh, and uh, what it, what on, on his way of the circle, it produces many, many incredible complex dotted rhythms. Normally if we create dotted rhythms, we have like a dotted eight note and the 16, we have the triplets, maybe quintuplets, but um, all this different, uh, um, differentiations in, in, in dotted rhythms. It's very easy to produce it. I made an animation for that, like this, the circle moves, you know, the, the percussion player makes the circles and now he just moved the circles, it's in the free field and now he's hitting the first and now he produces the dotted rhythms and the dotted change uh, uh, regularly and so on. Um, you can see that that's, uh, so what he's doing. Yeah, that uh, a typical um, like graphical spatialized rhythm idea, I would say. Um, another piece, uh, for example, where I used this animational idea uh, to start with was um, splitting 55. I just show, you know, you have a kind of surface uh, with different materials and now you have the circle and the circle is like moving from one part to the other. Uh, in a certain time. So, uh, 
and it's it's also growing, which means which means it's it's a crescendo. It's getting louder. It's smaller one. It's a decrescendo. So if it's gone, then we have silence, for example. Now you have the dotted rhythms. Um, as you see, it's it's working all over these different sections and produce different. Uh, really every every time a different sound in the circle and also you can do a um, second hand with the red circle so you have a like a really two voicing possibilities of rhythms so just with circles on the surface uh, it's a lot poss possible and you know you can't notate it uh, really without space uh, notation and Temporal, temporal video scores, you know. Uh, so you know, just just uh, the percussion player has this video score. He sees where the, the circle is moving, and he just follows. Um, yeah, that's that's. Uh, a, I would say, like with animation, it's a good, uh, really good means for uh, as a temporal uh, aspect of, of the score, a temporal score. Um, Another thing which I'm really interested in is which goes far beyond traditional notation. I mean, the time notation in music is quite complex and good, and I like it. But if you come to smaller, smaller events per second, you lose something because we have this paradoxy that if you have a, the classical note time notation, the smaller the event becomes, it becomes more, you, you have to make more signs, which is totally uh, crazy. I mean, if you have a, a 30 second note, you have to make like three signs. Uh, if you have a um, 64th note, four. Um, and if you want to define the length in this very short uh, time, it's almost impossible. So uh, I, I call that barcode rhythms. I really like this kind of rhythms, very small, quick, irregular events in a short uh, time distance. Um, I, I wrote, I wrote a, yeah, I, sh I show this example on a piece for Ensemble and Hot Air Balloons. Uh, like the beginning, the percussion player have this, this kind of uh, barcode rhythm at the beginning with motors. Yeah, uh, finally, I, that was the pieces from 2012. And uh, that was the first video score I had to develop because they told me, yeah, you have to write a piece for, for an ensemble and for, for, uh, for hot air balloonies, but uh, they are not musicians and they can't really play music. And musicians are not allowed to, to uh, fire the balloons because they have to be pilots. So I had to really think about how do I coordinate? And um, so I gave them a video score. We just, with the click track, the ensemble had the click track and the, the conductor. And then they could really follow uh, very clearly the, the video score and could quite precise, as you just heard, they are really together. And even at the end, they could play uh, quintuplets and complicated rhythms in, in, in um, cooperation with, with the ensemble. 
So as you see here now, it, uh, for example, I guess maybe I have it bigger, yeah. Uh, you have this small events in a short time period, this and it's also connected with the uh, different uh, dynamics. So with a visual visualization of like the height com combined with dynamic, you can quickly change and make immediately clear, you know, uh, which 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 kind of uh, volume you want to have. Um, so this is also, I think, an idea which is not really uh, uh, not notatable, if that word exists, in 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 a classical uh, rhythmical uh, um, music language. Um, and of course, with with motors, you you have the big advantage because the the activation process is uh, is running all the time you can easily uh, define the clear end and for these kind of rhythms the ending as i said before in these barcode rhythms the ending is very important that the the, the different lengths have to be really defined uh, and if you work with motors uh, as activation uh, tool you know normally the percussion player they have to be to activate but now in my pieces they use motors to activate like drums or stuff and then they are free uh, for second level of modulation. Um, this is a percussion piece for uh, for light percussion and lights and motors. We just show a little bit. Yeah, as you can see, the you know the drone is uh, produced by the by the motors, and so now he is free to to make the second layer of rhythms, which is only light. Uh, it's as you say a non-sound rhythm, but for me it's 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 clear. It's a rhythm and it's it's a mu musicalized material, uh, and it has to has has not to be sound to be music, or it has not to be rhythm. Uh, um, not to be sounding, to be rhythm. So it, like clearly for me, this is a musical action for percussion player. Um, and for he got this, for example, this video score also. And as you see in the the, the LED right plus and the LED left plus, so he, the things are running. And then now he starts with the right hand making on when it's black, and he can make this kind of rhythms. Uh, you know, very easy and clearly uh, suggestive, which I always like if a notation is immediately understandable uh, and uh, actively uh, uh, 
yeah, practical, very practical for them not to think about much, but see and play this direct uh, connection between a score and um, the, the action of a musician. <clears throat> Another piece is uh, where, where you see this is a cello piece um, I wrote a few years ago. And you know, normally for cello piece, you have the, the five lines in one line, and then that's the cello voice. But if you, if you are working in that non-pitch area, then of course you need like several steps uh, of representation uh, or of um, parameters which you should work on, which are to be controlled in that piece. For example, in the, in the, in the, in the lower part, you have the Zuspiel, which is like just the representation of the, of the wave graphics. So the, the user knows where you know, something is sounding. And then we have uh, the, the pressure curve, the Druck, then you have sonic motor A, and um, in this case you have a bow with making pulsations, uh, and I have these uh, systems of graphics. And maybe I don't know. I love graphics. I love this. Uh, maybe it's because I'm coming from mathematics, but you know, with this graphical like uh, ch uh, slightly uh, changing uh, possibilities to notate. Um, with, with the mathematical graphs, you can make such fantastical transi transitions from one rhythm, for example, from one pulse to the other. As you see, we have the septuplet at, the, at the, the, the highest line, and then you have the six tablets, and then you have the fourth 16 node and the triplets. And now I can like almost maneuver or navigate between these pulsations with this kind of um, notation. Just show this is the um, just it runs, it's, it's clear. Uh, you have also the, the countings in, in, the, in the stuff. So that, that's what the musician is, uh, is getting for play. I played this piece myself to just show the beginning. It's a very bad sound. Yes, of course, when you, when you have, uh, have to play a transition between a pure pulsation sound to more and more uh, noise uh, quality. And uh, it always, it also has, uh, it's, it's a question of controlling the pressure on the bridge. So you have to notate exactly that this pressure, amount of pressure you have to give, uh, to, give to the, the bow and the, and, the, and the sonic motor. So that's the reason why you need all these different uh, um, layers for, for, for notation. And uh, the, the highest one here is uh, the, wave, the wave sound of the cello itself. So he sees, because we are so used now for, uh, for, for looking at the sound in the computer 
rasterized version of the wave graphics that we easily can see many, many things already from the wave graphics, what the sound is about, even how loud it is, where are the, you know, the changes. Um, so I love, um, I love this, uh, to use also the wave graphics as a, a given notational uh, layer also, especially when you see it down uh, at the, um, at the Zuspiel part, at the tape part, you can see many uh, structures already and you can react, and not even when it's coming, but how loud it is and which, uh, which is very easy to copy from, the, from, the, from a sequencer program or uh, in, in, into a graphical program. Uh, skip here. Let's skip this. Yeah, this is like a normal page would look. Uh, I have this different like graphics where this transition of movements or pressure um, are notated or locations of actions. Um, I go further, many, many signs. And also I, I like to, to make differences in color. Uh, so the, the musician is uh, easier, uh, sees immediately this color means that, this color means this. Um, for example, for in this one, the, the red and, and pink, it's always uh, pulsation and rhythms. So they know, okay, if I see this, uh, for uh, this is uh, with a gray with, in bar 31, with a gray piano, mezzo piano and stuff, uh, you see, immediately see this is a dynamic curve. So um, I know immediately um, on, on the graphics, this is dynamic uh, um, controlled. And this is, uh, for example, uh, rhythmically pulsation controlling or in the last percussion part, on, in the last bar, you see this zero and flat. So he knows how, how flat and how, like, uh, how, st how strong the pressure is on the, on the tube he has to play. So, um, yeah, this, you have also in the, in the black bars, you have the, the contact noise again, or just written in space notation. Uh, but in combined with the, the perfect musical notation also. So uh, I come to another piece uh, for ensemble. Um, just it's quite swing this is Thema A. It's it's traditional instruments. Uh, it's a saxophone. It's 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 an English horn. It's it's a, it's a, a trombone, double bass, uh, grand piano, and then three are top player, like object player and a percussion player. And of course, if you would see, look at that score, it's really hard to see how it sounds. Uh, and what I did is what I, I always wanted to do is, or have the, this kind of non-pitch organized music that immediately you have the sound in the score. And uh, I just made like a combination of like final cut and uh, logic. And you can, can combine these two worlds and you have the sound and the score together. And you see the cursors running. Uh, the first sound is they have motors on a balloon and they are controlling the volume by distance of to the mic. Everything is mic in, in this piece. For example, um, you know what I what I think it would, which is highly suggestive also for the for the musician, 
you know, when when I I put the the double bass, for example, like in this case, I put it on, as a table bass on the table and play with motors. So immediately see here this motor is the motor with a little gum and it's on the bridge and 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 the next passage is uh, as you see there maybe it's too small for you but on the third page you see we have an M stick on the bridge and then you 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 activate the, the string itself or you see immediately with a balloon you don't have to to write a text anymore you immediately see with the graphics what to do and I think this is also with the position of the mic I mean if the mic is mic position is very important then of course uh, I have to, to give this information where's the mic where is the distance to mic uh, which is this curve uh, the, the dynamic curve so all the, these graphic means are um, very very helpful to to easily read or understand for the musician not for the the listener for the listener uh, as, as as when you look at the score or reader a score reader it's really hard to to know how it sounds but uh, i make scores uh, not for the reader but for the interpreter for the musicians and these uh, there are certain you know if you rehearse contemporary music uh, and you, i most of the pieces also i play on my own so uh, i like to play them and I, then you learn a lot about uh, the practical notational level, which, um, which make things uh, clear, but the musical ideas also very precise and don't lose too much attention to uh, complicated um, notation systems. I would like, to, like things to be very, very clear. I'm repeating myself and suggesting. Um, that's just, just uh, like a condensed uh, uh, version. So sound sound complexes can produce, or yeah, we can produce the sound complexes, really complex musical ideas, which is not only noise, because when we hear noise, we have mostly in our mind, like the noise wall or something like not very uh, differentiated in the, in the inner structure, but, um, with this kind of material I'm working with and many others also with this so-called, I call it sound complexes. You can, you can fix this kind of irregularities, uh, for example, because normal musical notation mostly deals uh, with regularity. And if you want to fix irregularity, then um, you have to find the new easy means. Maybe a last uh, um, example. Uh, it's 45, 6.45, so maybe last example. Uh, something about irregularity. Uh, I was, since years, I'm interested in this phenomenon, Britson, and I Googled, translated, tried Britson, and it said it's Britson in English. I don't know. So uh, I don't know, it's, it's this kind of sound when uh, electrical uh, devices are decharging. I, I don't know what it's like, the sparks are flying. Yeah, and I made a cello piece about this acoustical phenomenon uh, with the splitter on the strings. Um, and there it's, it's almost because there are so many uh, irregularities which are not really controllable. So I, I used the, the wave graphics. I played, I played, I played. And when I thought, yeah, this is the right sound, I used, as you see, you know, the indication is only second string on the cello. And it says undertone pressure, undertone druck, the, the second undertone and lower. That means almost uh, a broad uh, pressure uh, band. And then you have the, the contact with the splitter which means you have a certain position, four centimeter from bridge, you have a velocity, 2.5 centimeter per feet, and you have a pressure, 800 grams, to produce Dichte 4, which means like density 4. I have like five, six densities. Um, like here, uh, you see the densities on the, like in the brief graphics, one, two, three, four, like high density, like almost a sound, like a, a broad sound world 
uh, is the maximum. And what I found is that the, the um, by studying the wave graphics for the sound, I called maximal spritzen, uh, which I like most, in fact, uh, which comes closest to that spritzen uh, sound I was uh, searching for. Uh, I, I, I count just the, you know, the, the, like the high, the heights, and I found 27 irregular uh, divided uh, heights. So uh, per, per second, not per bar, it's per second. So this makes it this kind of sound I can reproduce with it with the cello. Um, I, last thing I show, I show you the Britson. Um, playing on my own. Yeah, as you see, pauses are very important for my music. Um, you know, the, the thing is that you can't really control every small hit, of course. Uh, and they are so so dense uh, that you can all, all only like make this kind of very raw distinctions, like density one, two, three, four, five. But with the uh, with the um, with the wave graphics, it's it's really it's really great to to use uh, as a visualization uh, for for that sound. So I'm I'm a big fan now. More and more, I use the wave graphics as a, a means of notation. Um, yeah, I have some more, but I think we should stop uh, for Q and A. Uh, if anybody has a, a question. Uh, I go, I stop share. Yeah, thank you very much. <clears throat> Anyone with a question? I mean, I have to say thank you very much, uh, Misha. This was amazing. I mean, I really would like to learn more about your composition process. So I could putting everything on paper. This, uh, it seems like every every piece is like a research project and, and has also probably also takes a long time for for you to, to actually have, come up with a final version. So yeah. congratulations uh, on, on, on this presentation and on showing us your music. Um, maybe we can all uh, Thank you. give a round of applause here, reactions, clap your hands. And um, yeah, so I, I can see some people have already raised their hands, quite a number of pieces, pieces uh, people actually. The first people that I, Noticed it was Todd Harrop. Uh, no, no, that was just applauding, or that's what ah, I meant to do, you. clapping my hands. Thank you very, very much. That was really yeah. fascinating. And Thank it you. inspires me to uh, work on a piece I did recently with found objects and percussion, and but I was uh, verbally uh, describing my score. But now I'm inspired to think more graphically and mathematically. Thank you. Thank you. Mieko has... Uh, put her hand up. Uh, oh. Yes, yes, thank oh. you very much. It's fascinating, you know, with the precision and thoughtfulness. Um, my question is actually quite a basic one. Um, in your music, and then actually in nearly everyone's music, when it comes to notation, time passes from left to right. Now, can, is that still the best way for you to conceive the passing of time? 
I'm thinking, for example, not only uh, above to below, but from front to back, like like a, a you know GPS that shows you that um, the next next destination is still you still go straight for three more kilometers, and then suddenly to the left, veers towards left, and so forth. Given that there are possibilities in which time can be notated differently, I I'd like to you know given that. You, you've you've thought through so many um, aspects of notating energy in a way. So um, I'd I'd like I'd like to yeah hear your opinion about how how time passes. <laughs> Thank you. <Ooh. laughs> uh, on, I think uh, it's it's a really interesting question because. Uh, in the world, I mean, there are different worlds. In the world of notation, uh, I think it's practical uh, to to go from now to future to future to future to you know to go in this way. But in the music, you know, in the listening, time is not at all left to right or following or continuous or like equal equidistant, I don't know what, you know, equal distance. So in, in the listening, the music itself, this is, this is the, you know, the big uh, advantage of our art that we, with the, in the music, we have totally different time experiences. And that's why I'm so fascinated by music, in fact. Uh, so this is for the listener, the time, this, 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 now, 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 next, next, next thing is totally for me gone. So I can I can feel like one minute is so long, so long, and I feel like if I'm in a Falcon piece for four hours, that was really short. Just a, to be extremely um, like what what the sensitivity or how our, our feeling of time, and also like if you move into in in a piece, if you're listening in a, in a piece. And you move from one uh, instrument cluster sound to the other, in you know back in your ear maybe the sounds two seconds ago, expecting this next sounds five seconds, but I have more like a three D uh, bulb imagination as a listener. So I can move like you said, not I don't I don't listen like this. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this shows you that there's, um, of course, uh, notated time, time that appears on the score and experience time, right? So maybe, yeah. Miko, uh, the, the time experience you're having and that you were referring to could be an entirely individual experience and, and with no connection whatsoever to the score that this time, this, this trajectory was, was fixed on. Yeah, it's the same, I must say, for uh, you can, you know, when, when a piece is finished for me, it's, all, it's finished at that point when, I, when I, I hear a certain freedom in it. Although everything is very precise, explored and set and notated. But if there is this kind of freedom in the piece that you feel like animated to, to move in that piece as you want, then the piece is finished. So that means uh, a, um, a precise notation is has not to be unfree or produce unfreedom, uh, or I don't know how to say it. Can I just sort of add one more question then? Yeah. Do you think the system, the current system we are all using, that time passes from left to right, is that adequate for your music? I have no better one. If you have a better one, I'm so curious to see it. Really, really. I have the, you know, I'm so trained in the cursor uh, sequencer. Uh, um, we are so trained and my brain is also so trained uh, in, in, to think of that way. And uh, I would love to have um, a different one. We'll think about it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Let me know. Someone else? We have three more minutes. 
until I, the can I do a question? So yep, yes, please go ahead with your question. Hello, thanks a lot for the wonderful presentation and uh, your score are really amazing written. And my question is about uh, notation in the sense that traditional score describes more the effect than the action of the musicians. So, and your scores mostly deal with the action. So in, 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 a, in a way that describes the action that the musicians suppose, uh, are supposed to do. Uh, I would like to ask you, what is the, I mean, if you ever tried or if you ever thought about a notation that describes also the effect or more the effect than the action to the- the, uh, I didn't understand the, the other word. Uh, essence, the your, essence, you mean? Essence? No, the notation that describes not the actions, but yeah. the effects. The effects. Of yeah. the, the music, so the result, let's say. Yeah. If you, has anything to do with your music or you... Um, I must say, you know, notation is, for me as a composer, because I'm also a visual person, so it has to look good. And also for a musician, the score has to look good. That, that, that immediately it's clear, here's somebody who has cared about the musicians, uh, you know, and aesthetically also it has to look good, but it's only the score for me, it's only a means for the best uh, uh, sounding result. So uh, reading a score like a Beethoven quartet, you know, like this kind of uh, in the head imagination, uh, you can do it as I showed with the, you know, with the implemented sound files, but this is not really something which I'm interested in. I'm really like the practical, the practical layer. Uh, if the musicians the score they, and they can produce easy, with easy means, with easy actions, that sound what is about. So uh, the 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 effects, it's not for me not so important. Um, in in this in the in the score, no, maybe I'm wrong because every score I I deliver it has a sound file, so they also have a, a sound file and some video demonstrations, of course, for download. So in so far, it's I know that the incompleteness of of a, a visual score for uh, for auditive art. Um, in so far, yeah, I I, I care. In, in this media layer, they have their sound and the effect, the real sounding effect is part of the score. Yeah, so you're right. Thanks, thanks a lot. <laughs> I think it's a very nice reflection, very important reflection, because if you think also harmonics, how you can, uh, uh, how can you write an uh, overtone, you can write with, a, with the action, let's say where to press or which sound will result. So yeah. I think it's a very important uh, question for, uh, yeah. for a composer. So maybe we, in this kind of music, we need both. Yeah, no, no, yeah. but I think it's a, it's a very personal, intimate question. And yeah. I think. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I think we need to come to a closing here. Um, this conversation could be continued. We have an open house later. Just join the open house after the concert and um, um, I would be, uh, yeah, I think uh, hopefully uh, Michael uh, has, a, has got a little time afterwards. If not, just write to him. I'm sure he'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Um, yeah, thanks so much again. We have to now stop and we need to, and uh, yeah, the, the next event will be uh, the remote choir uh, with um, Composers Justine Yang, uh, Jonathan Bell, Richard Hodley, and Anders Lind. Uh, see you back in a minute.